Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler, and I am the host and the founder of this podcast and the Order of Man movement. I want to welcome you here. Whether you've been with us for any amount of time or you're just visiting us for the very first time, uh, I was looking at the download numbers earlier today and yesterday or two days ago as of the release of this podcast was the single highest daily download uh, day of, of Order of Man since we started in March of 2015. So we continue to grow. We continue to set new records and new benchmarks. And I want to thank you for helping spread the word of reclaiming and restoring masculinity and stepping into what it means to be a man. Uh, and if you are new, that's, that's what this podcast is all about. It's all about helping you with the tools and the conversations and resources and everything that you might need to become a more capable father, husband, uh, business owner, leader in your community, coach, mentor, brother, whatever, whatever your thing is. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about what it takes to be successful. And I got to tell you, like, I haven't always been successful in my life. I am relatively successful now. Uh, and I imagine based on the trajectory of my life that I will continue to be successful. And even more so, I'm sure I'll have ups and downs. This is not a linear progression. It's up and down and sideways and back and forth and all over the place. And I realize that'll happen. But uh, when we zoom out, I imagine that the success will continue. And I think the reason for that is because I've incorporated some practices into my daily routine that have helped me to achieve the level of success that I have uh, and will continue to help me as I continue to grow and evolve and expand and get better and become more capable and all of those things. Uh, and as I think about the successful men that we've interviewed and had conversations with guys like Jocko Willink and Andy Frasilla and Sean Whalen and John Eldridge and Dakota Meyer, uh, I think that those successful men would agree that, yes, there are a lot of things that you need to do in order to achieve that success, but there's some underlying foundational principles, some practices that you can incorporate in your daily life that seem to be a common thread line uh, between those who are hyper successful and frankly, those who are not. And if you're listening to this podcast, it's, it's my guess that you want to be a successful individual, that you want to be able to lead your family effectively, that you want to have influence and credibility and authority with your wife, that your kids want to follow you, that your employees or your coworkers look to you as a leader and look to you for guidance and direction and insight, uh, that when you look at yourself in the mirror, that you feel good about the body that you've created for yourself, that when you pull up your bank account online, uh, you see those zeros behind the commas, right? And they continue to grow and, and, and get bigger as you progress and go along. That when you think about uh, the reach that you have in your business, for example, that you're proud of the accomplishments that you have, uh, you're proud of what you've created for your customers or your clients. These are the things that most men want. And if those are the things that you want, then there's some certain practices that aren't difficult uh, that are very simple and easy to understand that you can incorporate into your daily life in order to produce these results. Now, I do want to make sure I make the distinction between simple and easy. What I'm going to share with you today is not always easy, especially in the wake of our obligations and our responsibilities and everything that we have to do, but they are very simple. And sometimes we have a tendency of becoming our own worst enemy and getting in our way of doing these things that maybe you already know you should be doing. Uh, but I thought what I'd do today is share with you three practices that you can incorporate in your daily life every single day. That's why we call it your daily life. Every single day. There's no breaks. There's no rest days. There's no taking a break from these things or, or, or stepping back or pausing on, on these activities. These are things that I believe all men need to incorporate in their life every single day. And what's interesting is I think about these three practices I'm going to share with you uh, today is, is these are sometimes things I seem to rail against as much as I've incorporated them and I continue to implement these things in my daily life. Uh, it hasn't become easier. I, I guess maybe to a degree it's become easier, but there's still things that I fight against, that I rebel against, that I avoid doing, that I rationalize and justify why I shouldn't or don't have to do these things. So it might get easier to a degree, but I think for most of us, 
we have this uh, natural man. And, and I look at my life and the way that I perform and the way I show up as, as two distinct entities in a way. One is the natural man. The natural man is weak. He's lazy. He's immediate gratification. He wants the results without the effort. He's the more pathetic, the weaker version of myself. And on the other hand, I have this man who's strong and rugged and independent and capable and bold and courageous and all those virtues that we want to have and we want to espouse. And every day there's a battle between the two, between the natural man who wants to hit the snooze, who wants to take it easy, who wants to eat all the chips and salsa, who wants the results without the effort, and the other guy who's willing to put forth the effort, who's willing to grind, who's willing to toil and sweat and blood in order to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. He knows there will be work. He doesn't shy away from it. He knows that the path of honor isn't always the path of least resistance. In fact, in many cases, it's the path of, path of most resistance. But he's willing to walk that path because he knows and I know that that is the kind of man I want to be and, of course, leading me to the type of results that I want to produce. So I'm rambling at this point. But let's get into these three points and we'll talk about how to exhibit these things and how to incorporate them into your daily life. And then you can go out and you can start practicing them in your life and become a better man for it. So number one, simple. And you hear everybody talk about physical exercise. Gentlemen, if you aren't exercising every single day, training, lifting weights, running, swimming, jumping, walking, climbing, pulling yourself up, pushing yourself down, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. And I know you've heard this, this advice over and over and over and over again and why you have continued to hear it and why you will continue to hear it is because it works. It's a universal principle. And when guys ask me, Ryan, I want to get on the path. I want to improve myself. I want to fix my relationship. I want to lose some weight. I want to connect with my kids. I want to secure a promotion. I want to be confident around women. All the things that you guys ask about, they'll ask me, where do I start? Guys, very simply, you start in the gym. It's that easy. You start in the gym. And I'm not saying you need to go to some big box gym or, or, or some preconceived notion of what a gym is. I'm just talking about going to your place where you exercise and you move your body physically. That could be in your bedroom. And if all you're doing is push-ups and pull-ups on the door frame, then so be it. That's your gym. That could be going to the park and doing pull-ups on the, the monkey bars and doing monkey bars and running sprints and doing all of these different things that you could do at the park. That be, could be going into the, uh, the jiu-jitsu studio and practicing martial arts. Whatever your gym is, it could be the, the hike that you just went on or the, the running trail that you like or the mountain that you like to run up. That, that's your gym. And that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be in the physical gym, but you have to have a place dedicated towards you moving your muscles, getting the blood pumping, the air coursing through your lungs. And I can guarantee you, guarantee you that if you do this every single day, you can't help but be a better man. Like you wouldn't be able to not improve your life if you wanted to, right? If you were exercising and moving your body and getting the blood pumping and getting stronger and building the conditioning, there's no way that you could not improve your life. So I don't care what area of your life you're struggling. Let's say you're struggling at work and you've lost some motivation. Maybe you're not excited as, as excited as you were about what you were doing before. Uh, or you're not getting the promotion or you got passed over the promotion or, you know, your business isn't growing as fast as you would like. Go to the gym, your gym, go to your gym, exercise, train, move your body, move weights, lift things, run, just get everything pumping. I mean, I can't tell you how often I might go for a, even a walk, something as simple as a walk around our property. And I, and I map this out. If I walk the very edge of our property all the way around and I take a couple little paths on this area, just down by the, the, the creek here, it's exactly one mile. So I can't tell you how often I will go for a one mile walk because I'm frustrated about something with work or it isn't growing as fast as I would like or somebody turned me down or whatever, whatever it is I might be dealing with. And I can go outside and I can go for a walk and I'm not kidding, within five to seven minutes, 
I hit that aha switch and something triggers in my mind that says, here's the path. Here's what you need to do. Here's how you need to improve yourself. Here's how you need to improve the business. Here's the answer. Simply because I went for a, a 10 or 15 minute walk guys. So if you weren't waking up and I, I think you should just train in the morning. I mean, I see some guys that train in the afternoon and I just, I can't, I can't imagine training in the afternoon. Like I'm tired. I've been exerting myself all day, mentally, physically. Um, I want to relax. I want to spend some time with the family. Look, if it works for you, all the power to you. But I'm just saying like, get your ass up early and go get your workout done first thing in the morning because you aren't tired. Maybe you're a little groggy, but you aren't exhausted, right? You just had a nice rest uh, and you will set yourself up for success. That's part of the reason you should work out in the morning is your, or before your day starts. Maybe you're on a swing shift or a night shift or something like that. Start it before you start your day because then everything else will get better. Like if you went in, for example, because it was Memorial Day earlier this week and you went in and did the Murph, which is a mile run, 100 pull-ups, uh, 200 push-ups, and 300 air squats, and then another mile run. If you went and did that this morning, everything else throughout the rest of the day would become that much easier or more manageable because you exerted yourself physically first thing in the, in the day. So if you haven't incorporated physical exercise into your daily routine, then do it. Oh, well, Ryan, what about Saturday and Sunday? What about Saturday and Sunday? I'm not saying you have to run a marathon every day, but you do need to train every single day. Number two, learning. You need to learn new information. You need to exercise the mind. You need to turn on the intellect. You need to put new stimulus into your brain so that you can have new thoughts that come out of it, new ideas, new results. You have to continue to educate yourself. Schooling doesn't stop after high school. Schooling doesn't stop after some sort of post-secondary education and formal college years. It never stops. Now, your education could be as simple as, I'm going to read uh, a chapter of a book every single evening before I go to bed. It could be, I'm going to listen to this book on tape. If you want a book recommendation, I would suggest mine, Sovereignty, The Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Men. You can listen to it, or you could actually buy the book and you can read it, whatever, whatever works for you. It could be listening to a podcast like this or Jocko or uh, Real AF with Andy Frisilla or whatever, whatever your thing is. And you're gaining new information, new insights. You're pouring it into your brain. I once heard, I, I cannot for the life of me remember who it was, but this gentleman got arrested for attempted murder. And while he was in, in prison, he began to change his life around drastically. And he's hyper, hyper successful now. And, uh, and he said, basically the quote that I remember that stood out to me over years is, garbage in, garbage out. Meaning that at the time, he was putting so much filth and garbage and the people he was surrounded by, it was, just, it was just not good information. That was what was going into his brain. And of course, by default, that was the result he was producing. So if you're looking at your life and you're thinking, man, I'm producing crappy results or no results at all and I'm not getting what I want to get, nothing's going in here that's serving you well. You've got to put better information into your mind. So read good books. I mean, look, I've got a library behind me. I've done, I can't even count how many book recommendations I've given you guys. I've done, I think, close to maybe 300 interviews at this point. And I would say 50 to 60% of the guys I've had on the podcast, they have books. So you've got 100, 120, 150 books to choose from, from guys that I've had on this podcast. I mean, we have access to the world's brightest minds, the most successful entertainers, warriors, scholars, thinkers, performers, whatever. And you have access to it. And all you have to do is go buy a book and you can literally pull out your phone. And within two minutes, I can give you a recommendation. Sovereignty, the battle for the hearts and minds of men. That's going to be a continual recommendation for you. And within 60 seconds, literally 60 seconds, you could be reading it or listening to it. Guys, if you aren't learning new things, you're selling yourself short. Uh, one of the things that I've started to pick up, in fact, I, I thought I had my guitar there. I don't have my guitar there. It must be downstairs. Is I've started to play the guitar lately. And I've never played a musical instrument. Never. 
I guess maybe in sixth grade when I played the recorder, I remember how excited I was. You remember the recorder, about the recorder, and uh, that was the only musical instrument I've ever played. So I'm picking up the guitar, I'm learning chords. Basically, they're called the cowboy chords, right? You got C, D, G, F, uh, A minor, E minor, those sorts of things. So I'm learning those chords, and I really enjoy it. I've been doing it for probably 30 or 40 days, and I have not missed a single day. That's new information, that's learning. That's creating new hardwiring in your brain, connecting different things that have never been connected before. And that's partly the reason I decided to pick up the guitar because it was completely outside of my, not my comfort zone because it's not uncomfortable, but it was completely outside of my typical interest. My typical interests are like, hey, I'm going to go do jujitsu or I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to shoot a bow or shoot a gun or whatever, right? It's typically those types of things, but never a musical instrument. So I went and did that by design because I wanted to turn on and unlock different parts of my brain. So consider where you're falling short uh, or where you don't have a whole lot of information or practice or knowledge about a particular subject and maybe that's something that you should go explore. I had a guy on Instagram uh, ask me because I had made this post about three practices we need to incorporate every single day and and the gentleman had asked uh, where he should start on things he should learn. I don't know, just find something you're interested in. Like we, we got to stop overthinking this. Like, well, what, what should I learn and what should I start and what book recommendation and what podcast and what this and what that from all these people you listen to? Like, what are you interested in? And I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you need to be like deeply interested in it. I'm not suggesting that it needs to be something that you want to pursue as a career. I'm just saying what sounds remotely interesting to you. Like if I was talking about the guitar and you're like, you know, I really wanted to try playing the guitar, then do that. It'll cost you 50 bucks to go get a guitar at the pawn store. And, and you can get a free app or you can download Musician is the program that I use. I think it's, I don't know, 150 bucks or so a year. So it's very inexpensive and I can learn. If learning how to paint is something that sounds remotely interesting to you, then go learn to paint. Buy a canvas, buy some paints and pull up YouTube and get after it. If learning jujitsu is your thing, then learn jujitsu. If learning how to shoot is your thing, learn how to shoot. Warrior Poet Society is a great program for some of that stuff. The information's there, guys. And if you're like, well, I don't know what I want to do and I haven't really thought about it and like, what what should I try? I I think you're probably at this point just using that as an excuse, a justification to procrastinate what it is you want. I'm not saying that you need to have everything lined out and figured out and you need to be going down the path that you want. I'm just saying, if it sounds interesting, then explore it. And if you explore it and you're like, this is, this sucks. This is lame. I don't want to learn more about this. Then stop learning about it and learn about something else. All right. Whatever course and path you choose isn't the final destination. It isn't the only choice you can make. You can pivot, you can adjust along the way. And you should, there's things that I've tried where I'm like, yeah, I don't like that. Like cooking. For example, people ask me, what's your favorite dish? I don't to cook. They ask me, what's your favorite dish to cook? I don't like cooking. I hate it. I hate everything about it. I've tried liking it. I've tried grilling. I've tried the Traeger grill. I've tried barbecuing. I've tried baking. I've tried it all. I'm like, I don't like it. It's miserable. I hate it. And I'm not saying it's bad. Like I'm just saying I don't enjoy it. So I don't do it. My wife does the cooking in the house because she actually enjoys it. And then I find things that I enjoy that are more significant and meaningful to me. And that's what it's about. And it doesn't matter what it is. And it doesn't matter if I do it or Jocko does it or Andy does it or whoever else does it. It matters if you like it. So again, number two is education. Now, the third component, I think this is where a lot of guys will get hung up because I did get a lot of questions about this, but the third component that you need to address in your life is restraint. A daily practice that you can incorporate into your life is restraint because generally speaking, we just don't restrain ourselves enough. And because we don't restrain ourselves enough, we haven't built up the muscle, the the, the power to resist temptation when it comes into our lives. And I think we'd sell ourselves short. Of course, we do ourselves a huge disservice when we can't be self-disciplined. So if you aren't practicing some form of sacrifice or restraint or discipline, however you choose to look at it, I choose to look at it as restraint because again, I'm, I'm a natural man, right? Like I want all the chips and salsa. I want the ice cream. I want I want all of it. I want the results without the effort and, and to be able to restrain myself, especially somebody with like an obsessive personality. Like if I latch onto something like playing the guitar, for example, I'm latched onto that thing. It isn't like dabbling for me. A lot of you guys are very much the same way. And so I need, if it's, if it's something healthy, it's good. Okay. It's good. 
But a lot of the times I have the ability to latch on to something and become obsessed to an unhealthy level with things that don't necessarily serve me. And if I can't build up the muscle, the resolve to restrain myself, then when things are infinitely more important and I'm playing with graver consequences, then it's hard for me to be able to develop that. So somebody asked me, well, what, what, by restraint, what do you mean? I mean, all the things that you know you shouldn't be doing, that you're doing anyways, like hitting the snooze button, the first thing when you wake up, that takes a level of restraint and a level of commitment and discipline and sacrifice and honoring your word, but certainly restraint because what's the first thing you want to do when you hear that alarm go off, right? The alarm's buzzing next to your ear when you wake up. The first thing you want to do is you want to run over or, or reach your hand over and you want to hit that snooze button. You have to restrain from doing that and instead decide to plant your feet on the floor, get your ass up out of bed and get to work, whatever work looks like for you. Exercise, preferably, first part of the day. If all the chips and salsa are a thing for you, like they are for me, then you need to exhibit some restraint and not eat all the chips and salsa. Maybe don't eat any of the chips and salsa or any of the ice cream. Fasting, by the way, is a great way to restrain yourself because you're going to be hungry. Your stomach's going to be growling. You're going to, your body's going to be telling you you need food or you're going to starve or you're going to die. All these things that aren't true. And your ability to go 48 hours or 24 hours or even 12 hours without eating some food would actually probably be a pretty good thing for you. And it wouldn't kill you and you wouldn't die. It would be uncomfortable. You'd be hungry. You might be grumpy, hangry, but you know, you'd be able to get through it. If alcohol or tobacco or gambling or whatever is your thing, then exhibit some restraint. And frankly, guys, this is just a choice. It's just a choice. Restrain the natural man. Go back to that guy. Right? He's wild. He's uncontrollable. He's immature. He just, he, he does what he wants. He has no discipline and no commitment. And you have to shackle that guy up. You've got to re restrain that guy. And so if you can't practice some level of restraint throughout your day, then as I said earlier with the other practices, you are selling yourself short and you're succumbing to the weaker version of who you are. So I would suggest that you take something that you really enjoy and take it out of your life for a moment. Not forever, just for a moment. Maybe you do a 30 day alcohol fast. Maybe you do a 48 hour food fast where all you're drinking is water. Maybe you don't have any chips and salsa or ice cream. Maybe you restrain or re refrain from engaging in pornography. These are the things that you need to uh, make yourself stronger and more capable of resisting because you know, you know that these are the things that are hindering your growth and progress and expansion and not to mention how much time it will save and mental energy and capacity when you can be fully engaged, mentally present, morally awake to all these things and straight and, and wary of what's going on and then pour all of your energy and attention and resources into the things that actually matter. Like dating your wife, like playing Legos with your kids, like working on that email sequence that you've been putting off or making 20 phone calls that you need to make or whatever you know you've been putting off. Now you have the time and the capacity to do it. So again, these guys aren't simple, or excuse me, aren't complex practices. They're very simple. You've probably heard people talk about them before, but man, what a powerful framework. Three things you should do on a daily basis. Just three. Now granted, there's probably some other things that you should be doing, but three very simple things that you can incorporate everything, every single day to improve your life. Exercise, learning, and restraint. Restraining yourself from participating in the things that, that, that you know you shouldn't be participating in. So that's it, guys. Get after it. That's it. That's all, those, all there is to be said. Just, just get after it. Incorporate that into your daily plan. I use my battle planner. I write down every single morning and every single afternoon what I got done, what I need to continue to get done. I check off my progress. I review it for the following day, plan out my next day. I use this battle planner. They, these, by the way, I've had thousands of people ask on these. These will be available for you in uh, two weeks. We had a printer issue <clears throat> and... Um, yeah, just got messed up on them. So we've had to correct that, but they are on their way. You can check that out in the store. 
if that works or use whatever. Uh, if something else works better for you, then use that. I don't care as long as it works for you and it's improving your life. But again, practice exercise, practice learning, practice restraint. And I think you're going to be, not even I think, I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you are going to be a better, more capable version of yourself, whatever that looks like for you. And you will accomplish more in your life. And that's actually an interesting, uh, that's actually an interesting dichotomy, I guess you will too, is that by implementing these things into your life, you may think, well, I'm taking away from other things. And yeah, you are, you are taking away some time to do other things, but you're going to be that much more effective. You can, you can probably do in three to four hours what you, th what you think will take eight. Just because you're not effective, you're not efficient, you're not as energetic as you could be if you were to practice and implement these three practices on a daily basis. All right, guys, so that's it. That's all I've got for you. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. We've got had some great conversations. Uh, last week, we had Sean Whalen on. Uh, this week, we had Robin, Robin Dreek, uh, former FBI behavior analyst. Uh, we also had Greg Anderson, the police officer who was or is in the process of being fired due to quote-unquote insubordination. That's what they said. But it probably had more to do with the message that he had shared in his uh, viral video uh, regarding the unconstitutional, the, the questionably unconstitutional actions that some police officers are taking uh, by enforcing and upholding uh, unconstitutional orders and restraints in the in the wake of COVID-19. Uh, and then uh, I can't remember who we have next week, but man, we've got such an incredible lineup. Matt uh, Best is going to be on the podcast soon. Matt Fraser is going to be on the podcast soon. I've recorded both of those. They'll be released soon. So uh, yeah, keep sharing, keep promoting, leave us a rating and review. All of these go a long way. And not only promoting the visibility of the show, but ensuring that we get the highest caliber quality men on the podcast so they can share and impart their, uh, their insights and their wisdom upon you. All right, guys. So make sure every single day, again, exercise, uh, learning, and then restraint. All right. Go out there, get after it, take action, and become the man you are meant to be.